Thank you. I have a very special speaker here. It's a veteran who's walked the Appalachian tra Trail in his bare feet. He's now walking from Concord across the nation in bare feet, questioning the treatment of veterans by family courts. I'd like to introduce you, Ron Zelensky. Hello, I'm Ron Zaleski, and I'm humbled and honored to be here. I'm humbled <clears throat> that people thought that I had something to say. I'm honored to be here to speak to anybody that will listen, that wants to change the world. I'm with the nonprofit, thelongwalkhome.org. We work to ensure that all military personnel get mandatory counseling before they get discharged. It's a three-point program that we want. Loss of life and limb counseling before they get out of boot camp to prepare them so that they are gonna be aware of the emotions that they're gonna have when they go into combat and so that they know what it's gonna be like. We want mandatory counseling for all military personnel prior to discharge, whether they were in combat or not. This will take away the stigma that comes with PTSD, making them feel like they're different. We're all the same. None of us are different. You put any human under that kind of stress, it has an impact. We want to help prepare them to go back to living in the civilian world. Then they will get tools to work with in this counseling, whether they need it or not. Just like when they go into the military and they say, you know what, I don't want to go to boot camp. Just give me a weapon and some ammo and send me over. We don't do that because we want to prepare them so that they make it back alive. Well, when they get home, we should do the same thing so that they can go back to their family and do the best that they can. Then we want counseling for them. We want support groups for them after they get discharged. It wouldn't be mandatory, so they would have a place to go that would be safe, where they could meet their peers, so that they could continue to get help and to heal. This walk, I've been walking across this country barefoot, carrying a sign that says 18 vets a day commit suicide. I, th th I thought this walk would be just about getting signatures and getting people riled up to sign it so that they would tell their congressmen what they want because I know that congressmen won't do anything unless they're told. And if we don't tell them, they won't do it. And I have sat on my hands for 33 years and expected them to read my mind. Well, I don't expect them to read my mind anymore. I expect them to listen to what I have to say and enough of the American people say that they're going to do this. People would tell me, you know what, this is Obama's war and they're doing us this to us and they have to do this. I say, no, it's my war. It's our war. I'm doing this. I'm doing this by my inaction. I refuse to sit by and do nothing any longer. Because of my inaction, 18 a day commit suicide. And that's the tip of the iceberg. The iceberg is the families that are destroyed. When that man comes home and kills himself, or that woman kills him herself, their children have an 85% chance of committing suicide. That's unacceptable to me. And those that don't, they become homeless, or they become incarcerated. And the worst ones are the ones we don't acknowledge. The ones that come home, they've come home safe, they've reintegrated back into society and done a noble job, and we ignore them and say, well, that's expected of you. And we just blow it off. And they're angry because they're not acknowledged. And I acknowledge them that they are 
the cornerstone. They are the foundation of this country. We send the best, the strongest and the brightest over, and then we destroy them. And the ones that aren't destroyed, we expect them to come back like nothing ever happened. And they are the foundation of this country. When you destroy that foundation, you have nothing. If we continue at this rate, we won't have a country. And the hardest part of this journey for me has been when I walk and a car will come and do a U-turn. And a woman will step out of that car and stand there and cry. And then she will tell me how her son came home and committed suicide. Then she will hold me like I'm her son and cry on my shoulder. If people could feel what I feel, this would be no issue. Tonight it would be over. But we get so lost in just trying to make a buck and just trying to live and hang on to our own that we figure that's not my problem. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with us. Anybody that says, I don't want to get involved, they're kidding themselves. If you live in this country, you're involved. And I say if we're involved, we should do something about it. The other part, part that I see is these people blow me off. And they're apathetic. They make me the angriest. And they laugh and think it's a joke. You know, you're just some crazy old man walking barefoot. Maybe I am, but I'm doing something. I don't know what else to do to make a difference, to get people to sit up and do something. So I do this. The one thing I've done is brought hope, and some people feel at least somebody cares, somebody's doing something. And they laugh, but you know the joke's on them, because if we continue with this rate, we don't have to worry about somebody coming to our show has taken over because we're doing it for them, because there's nothing here. If we can let our own children, our loved ones, go through this and just blow them off and let them live in the streets and go to prison and have their families destroyed, that's the iceberg, is the families that are destroyed. Every guy that comes home affects 30 people, and the closest ones get hit the most, and the most innocent ones are the children. A man or woman comes home, and they come home to no job, and their husband or wife leaves them, and the children think it's their fault. They blame themselves. It's my fault that they split up. It's not, but you can't tell them that. And I thought when I did this walk, the people that would stand up, that would make a difference and, say, and bring this to everybody's attention, were the ones who had somebody that committed suicide. But as I walk through this country and meet those people, I understand why they don't stand up. Because they blame themselves. When those men and women come home and kill themselves, the family thinks it's their fault. It's my fault. I see it when I look in their eyes, the burden of guilt and shame that they carry. And they blame themselves. And the light in them, that light of joy and love is going out. And their eyes are a little duller. Their step is a little slower because a part of them has died and they blame themselves. <clears throat> I blame myself because I sat on my hands for 33 years and have allowed this to happen. I have dishonored the name Marine, which I was, because I did not go back for the wounded. It's a myth that anybody goes to a war in the military and comes out unwounded. That is a myth. They are all wounded. They all need help. And I am back. I have come back for the wounded. And I will do what I can to make amends for 33 years of sitting on my hands. And what I would like you to do, I want you to help me to make that difference. And I'm not asking for much. By myself, I can only make a little change. But a group of us working together can change history. If you just take a moment of your time to write a letter to your congressman, you can go on our website, thelongwalkhome.org, or you see me walking down the street. Sign the petition I carry. Sign the petition on our website, because we are going to hand deliver that to every congressman. And then we are going to hand deliver it to the president November 11th, 2011, when I am done walking across this country and coming back to the other state.